Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 1.4, complex numbers, video 5 of 6. You may notice from the previous video that the lighting's a little bit better. I did manage to secure my uh, previous location for recording, so hopefully these are easier to see. Well, so far in this series of videos, we've looked at different sets of numbers all the way from counting numbers through the real numbers, and from that built a larger set of numbers called the complex numbers. We had to introduce imaginary numbers based on the fact, by definition, that if you see a square root of negative one, you change it to i, and a consequence of that fact, which emerged as we were multiplying in the previous video, was if you see i squared, change it to negative one. And also at the conclusion of the previous video, we discussed the product of conjugates, conjugates being two complex numbers whose real parts are the same, in this case they're both a, and whose imaginary parts are opposites, in this case positive bi and negative bi. And a desirable property of conjugates is when you multiply them, the product is real. You don't have to memorize this formula. This is just saying that when you multiply, a plus bi and a minus bi, the product will always be a squared plus b squared. And more importantly, this is a real number, it has no i's. That will be very important in just a moment. So let's move on to division, which is a natural place to go after multiplication. On the board I have one example, and I think one example will suffice to develop and refine the technique. We're going to divide 34 minus 14i by 4 plus 2i. So how do you approach division? Well, in a nutshell, any division problem is a fraction and vice versa. So in an uncharacteristic move, I'm going to make something into a fraction that is not given to us as a fraction. I can write this division problem by putting 34 minus 14i in the numerator and 4 plus 2i in the denominator. Now, could we do what we're about to do without setting up a fraction? We could, but believe it or not, this is going to be a more efficient way to organize our work. Before I bust the lid open on how to divide complex numbers, let's think about what we're heading for. We're heading for a complex number in standard form. In other words, when we take one complex number and divide it by another, our goal is to get a complex number in standard form, something real which we generically call A, plus something imaginary, which we generically call BI. And it is worth mentioning that this plus could be a minus, because B is allowed to be any real number. And if it were negative, then this would actually be a subtraction problem. So how are we going to get there? How are we going to get from one complex number on top of another to something of the form A plus BI? Well, another problem-solving strategy I introduced one in the previous video is what's wrong with what we currently have and how are we going to fix it? The previous problem-solving strategy was, what was it? It was learning something that you don't know by connecting it to something that you do know. This problem-solving strategy is how do we fix what's wrong? Well, what's wrong with this? Why is this not in standard form? Standard form is something plus something i. And we have a fraction that has i's on both sides. Now, if the i one on the bottom, don't erase yours, I'm just going to show you what would happen if there were no i on the bottom. We could combine these into a single number, which still doesn't get us looking like this. But one thing you can do with fractions is unadd them, or in this case, unsubtract them. And what do I mean by unadd and unsubtract? Well, the rule for adding and subtracting fractions is get a common denominator and then combine the numerators. These numerators have already been combined. I can uncombine them by splitting it into two fractions with the same denominator. 34 sixths minus 14 sixths i which is technically in standard form. It can be reduced, but that's just a matter of doing it. So, 
If there was no i in the denominator, we're pretty much one move from getting an answer in the correct form. Except there was an i in the denominator. I believe the denominator was 4 plus 2i. It says it right there. So if we can make the i in the denominator disappear, then we're practically done. We split into two fractions and reduce if necessary. So now the problem becomes how do we make the i in the denominator disappear without just erasing it? Now, if you're tempted to say, let me cancel these i's, stop. One thing you will hear me say repeatedly throughout these series of videos is when you can and cannot reduce in a fraction. The rule is really simple. In a fraction, you can only reduce, well, you can only cancel parts of multiplication problems. You cannot cancel parts of addition problems. You cannot cancel parts of subtraction problems. The reason is really simple. A fraction is a division, and the opposite of dividing is multiplying. It's when opposite operations meet that cause canceling. This i in the top, although it is part of this small multiplication problem, is embedded inside of a subtraction problem. Because this i is inside of a subtraction problem, you cannot cancel it because subtraction is not the opposite of division. So, and again, I will sound like a broken record throughout this, these series of videos. Do not cancel parts of addition or subtraction problems in fractions. You can only cancel parts of multiplication problems. That means we can't just cancel the i's, nor can we reduce the 2 with the 14, or the 4 with the 34, or any other reduction. Because everything in this fraction is either part of a subtraction problem or part of an addition problem, and therefore none of it is reducible. So let's go back to fixing the problem. The problem is there's an i in the denominator and we don't want it there. So if we can't just get rid of the i's, what can we do? I'm just recopying this fraction. Well, what things are we allowed to do to a fraction that preserves its value? Well, we can multiply both sides of it by the number of our choice. You do this all the time when you're getting common denominators. For example, if you were adding, I don't know, 5 6 plus 3 8 and you said, well, the common denominator is 24, so I'll multiply both sides of this fraction by 4 to get a 24, and both sides of this fraction by 3 to get a 24. You've done this move before. Let's multiply by something convenient that accomplishes something. In this case, it accomplishes getting the common denominator. But what are we trying to accomplish here? We're trying to accomplish a denominator without an i in it. So let's put those two things together. Number one, I can multiply both sides of this fraction by anything I want except zero, provided I use the same multiplier on both sides. Number two, I want the i in the denominator to disappear. So, what can we multiply 4 plus 2i by? that would, upon multiplying, not have an i in it. In other words, be real. Hmm. Oh, looky here. The product of conjugates is always real. And again, you don't have to remember this formula, but you should know that the product of com complex conjugates is always real. I am setting up a product I want it to be real, have no i's. So why don't we hit both sides with the conjugate? Conjugate of what? Well, it's the denominator we're trying to turn real. So let's multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, which would be 4 minus 2i. But whatever I multiply on the bottom, I have to multiply on the top. We're going to plug this out, but I want to go ahead and document the steps that we're doing. Step number one. Multiply both sides of the fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. Or in English, change the sign in the middle of the bottom of the fraction and multiply both sides by that new number. So change 4 plus 2i to 4 minus 2i, and multiply both sides by it. 
Now, as a consequence of that, we got a lot of foiling to do. I'm going to say foil both sides, but keep in mind that foil is just a gimmick for distributing, and sometimes you are just distributing. For example, if the numerator were just 34, then I would just distribute the 34. But let's foil these. As we do more and more foil problems, I will do them more efficiently. For example, starting on the top, the first part of the foil process is 34 times 4, which I believe is 136. Let me do it again. Yes, 136. The outside part of foil, 34 times negative 2i, is negative 68i. The inside part of foil on the top, negative 14i times 4, is negative 56i. And feel free to use a calculator for these products. And then the last part of the foil process on the top, negative 14i times negative 2i, Negative times negative is positive. 14 times 2 is 28. And i times i is i squared. Let's fix that right now. I see an i squared. We're supposed to change it to negative 1. So what is the net result of changing the i squared to negative 1? The positive 28 i squared becomes positive 28 times negative 1, which is negative 28. So let's cross out the plus 28 i squared and replace it with just a minus 28. We'll combine like terms in a minute, but we're still foiling. Now, for the denominator, we're just multiplying a complex number times its conjugate. So you can just use this shortcut, which says square the 4, square the 2, and add them. But if for some reason you forget that, just foil it. 4 times 4 is 16. For the first, for the outer, 4 times negative 2i is negative 8i. For the inner, Positive 2i times 4 is positive 8i. And for the last, positive 2i times negative 2i. Positive times negative is negative. 2 times 2 is 4. i times i is i squared. Oh, look, I see another i squared. When you see it, you change it to negative 1. This becomes negative 4 times negative 1, which makes it a positive 4. So now let's combine everything on the top and on the bottom. I think we can get rid of this. Okay, on the top, we have two real terms, 136 and negative 28. 136 minus 28 is 108. Let me double check that. Correct. For the imaginary parts, we have negative 68i minus 56i. And if we combine those, I believe we get minus 124i. But let me double check that. Yes. In the denominator, it cleans up a lot more nicely. Sensor isn't doing what I thought it was going to do, but hmm. Now we In the denominator, the real parts are 16 and plus 4, which is 20. But the imaginary parts cancel because that's what conjugates do. Come on, red marker, don't get that on me. All right, I have to get a new red marker. My spidey senses are tingling. I feel like something went wrong. Because when I designed this problem, it wasn't supposed to come out to be um, rational numbers. Well, it was supposed to come out to be whole numbers or integers on the next step. So if you spot a mistake and you're screaming, I see the mistake, I can't hear you. But let's finish the problem, then I'll retrace my steps to see if I can figure out where my mistake is, if there's a mistake at all. At this point, we've almost got an answer in the form that we want, a plus bi. So all we have to do at this point is split into two fractions and reduce. Split into two fractions and reduce. And again, this move is for the most part cosmetic. I want to make you look the way I want you to look. If I split this into two fractions, I have, I thought I spotted a mistake. I have 108 over 20 minus 124 over 20i. And both of those fractions can reduce. The first one can reduce by 4. That will leave a 5 on the bottom and a 27 on the top. The second fraction will also reduce by 4, leaving a 5 on the bottom and looks like 31 on the top. 
with an I at the end. And so assuming everything went correctly, because I'm still suspecting there was a mistake somewhere, the answer to this division problem is 27 fifths minus 31 fifths I. The important thing, before I pause the video and look for any errors, is to divide two complex numbers. You set up a fraction, then multiply both sides of the fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. Translation, change the sign in the middle, hit the bottom with that, but also hit the top. Foil it all out, clean it up. The denominator should become real, then split into two fractions and reduce. I'm going to pause this video and one of two things will happen. I will catch a mistake, in which case I'll make a supplemental video to correct it. Or everything is correct, and so in the final video I'll just say everything is correct.